Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Acting Deputy President. Um, I'm reminded of the words that uh, the now Prime Minister Tony Abbott uh, uttered during the election campaign. He, he made this promise to the Australian people. He said that he would lead an opus, open, an honest, and a transparent government. He made that promise to the Australian people, and they are very noble sentiments. They're sentiments that, regardless of what side of politics you're on, um, that we acknowledge and agree with, uh, because a transparency is the lubricant through which governments function properly. Um, and that's why so many people have become alarmed at what has emerged from this government uh, since their election. Um, this concern doesn't come from just the usual suspects. It comes from right across the political spectrum. It comes from uh, commentators. It comes from people right across uh, the media. And they're concerned about this culture of secrecy that has emerged and that has infected everything this government does. Uh, we're now seeing information so tightly controlled uh, by the Prime Minister. We've seen leaked newspaper reports that state that all media coordination and requests need to go through the Prime Minister's office, this centralised control. We've seen on the issue of refugees and asylum seekers a Prime Minister and a minister who, during an election campaign, well, you couldn't shut them up when it came to this issue. You couldn't shut them up. Um, photograph next to banners with tallies of boat arrivals, talk of towing back boats, talking of buying boats from Indonesian fishermen. And now what's happened? Well, we've seen a government elected and Mr Morrison's missing in action. Now, the Prime Minister is missing in action when it comes to this issue. No comment. That's an operational matter. No comment. That's an on-water matter. We saw, remarkably, a request for information from this Senate, an order for the production of documents um, relating to the issue of Operation Sovereign Borders. And we saw in response a public interest immunity claim. Sorry, we can't provide you with that information. Um, all we can do is provide you with private briefings on matters that have been discussed in press conferences. Well, we're not interested in that. We're not interested in a few short paragraphs that say so that's an operational matter, that's an on-water matter. It goes further. We've seen freedom of information requests made more difficult, um, the media no longer being able to access ministers on critical issues, questions or comments like cabinet in confidence, uh, public interest immunity, uh, operational matters. They are thrown around like confetti. And it's an old ploy. It's a ploy that you use when you want to bury information. Um, the promise of open, honest, transparent government has not been delivered. And for a government that is so intent on maximising freedom, well, I've got a quote here from a passage. Uh, 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 work titled Freedom in Australia from 1966, and I just want to quote from the authors, uh, Campbell and Whitmore. The most pernicial, pen, sorry, I'll stay, say that again, the most pernicious of official attitudes is secrecy. Ministers and officials have developed a firm attitude that the general public are not entitled to know anything about what they're doing, even if their actions vitally affect the rights of citizens both individually and collectively. And yet, here we are, a government promising to maximise individual freedoms missing in action. Um, we saw Minister Cormann, the finance minister, when in 2010 was, in, was um, intent on getting information uh, from the then government, make the accusation that the government was, I quote, an arrogant, secretive government which has repeatedly refused to answer questions and which has not taken seriously orders of the Senate. Hypocrisy writ large, again, arguing that we have senators that have sought access to information for months now in relation to a specific matter, that the government has declined to provide that information, 
We think the release of that information is critical. I do not understand why the government is treating this as if it is a national security related state secret. Words from Mr Cormann, the very person who's made the public interest immunity claim that is the subject of today's uh, debate. Now, the Commission of Audit is a critical piece of information. It is the most important piece of work done in many years. It will inform the federal budget. And we know already from the commissioners themselves that everything is on the table. Already floated have been the issue of Medicare co-payments, so that now it becomes uh, uh, there's a $6 fee when someone goes to see their GP, the end of bulk billing. We've seen huge cuts to the public sector being floated. We've seen cuts to the disability support pension. We've heard that the privatisation of Australia Post is on the table, and so on and so on. These are significant changes and they are worthy of public debate. Now we do not, we do not shy away from the idea of a debate on these matters. And in fact, a commission of audit may indeed be a good idea, an honest debate, one that Senator Mason clearly wants to have about spending and revenue is a good thing because we have some major challenges and we need to start planning for the future. But instead, the process we have is a black box. We've got the commissioners being handpicked. We've got the terms of reference bias to get a particular outcome. Submissions aren't being made public. And that's why we've had to set up an inquiry into this process so that we at least inject some transparency in what is going to be one of the most important documents considered by a federal government in decades. And what has emerged through that inquiry is this, that contrary to Senator Mason's assertions, we have a very efficient public sector. Public spending is not out of control. It's been stable for two decades. And compared to most other countries, we do very well when it comes to the uh, spend of public monies. Of course we can do better, but we do much, much better than most other countries on that measure. When it comes to our health system, far from being unsustainable, we have one of the most efficient, one of the fairest health systems anywhere in the world where we get value for money because of the fact that we have a single public insurer that allows us to drive down costs through the delivery of healthcare services. Far from being unsustainable, what we have is a health system that delivers value for money. We know that, in fact, this is a country that is a low-taxing country, and we are taxing much lower as a proportion of GDP than we taxed during the Howard era, for example. They are some facts that need to be ventilated through this debate. Our tax take as a proportion of GDP has decreased significantly from the Howard era and is much lower than most other OECD countries. We have a revenue problem, not a spending problem. Uh, we've heard a lot about corporate welfare for, um, through the inquiry that we've run. Uh, we've heard Joe Hockey talk about the age of entitlement. Well, let's start talking about the huge corporate welfare that flows to the mining sector. Let's talk about the huge subsidies and tax concessions that are given to other sectors of the economy, like the private health insurance industry. And let's start talking about some sacred cows like negative gearing and the huge concessions that are given through superannuation. You see, what we've got at the moment is an ideological debate. We've got a government that believes that we should tax lower. Well, if you're going to tax lower than what we're currently taxing, then what are we going to cut? What sort of society do we want to live in? Do we want a health system like the US, where we have 50 million people uninsured and where the biggest cause of personal bankruptcy is people not being able to pay their health insurance bills? That is the recipe from this government, and it's not one that the Australian people want. No, we're heading towards a dog-eat-dog -dog world under this government, a less caring society, a one where it's every person for themselves. If we're going to have a debate, we should have it. We should do it publicly. The government should release the findings of the Commission of Audit instead of providing this as a way of political cover 
for a government who wants to implement their agenda.